um, welcome to the first Crochet Chris podcast. Um, my name is Chris and I'm a crocheter and I own a yarn store with my sister, Lisa. Our store is The Knit Sheet in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And this podcast is not going to be specifically about the yarn store, but since that's what I do and there's a lot of overlap, um, it'll come up sometimes. But this is just about me and my crochet life and the things that I like to make. So I guess first a little bit about me, like a lot of people, I first learned how to crochet from my grandmother when I was a little girl. Um, and I spent a lot of time making rectangles. Um, I made scarf upon scarf upon scarf. After a while, I just took a, um, a stitch dictionary and I would just pick a random stitch out and just make it scarf size. And eventually I decided I wanted to try my hand at making garments and that's what I do now. I make sweaters and dresses and scarves and still occasionally some scarves, um, cowls, shawls, things like that, but just anything wearable that's kind of my wheelhouse. Um, so if I try to squeeze in like finished objects and whips and everything, um, we'll be here a really long time. So this episode, I just want to focus on two events that I attended last week. And the first one was a event hosted by Rowan. It's a, if you don't know, Rowan is a British yarn company and they have these four events that they're doing around the country for yarn store owners. Um, kind of like a reintroduction to their brand a few years ago. The company was sold and I guess the transition to the new ownership was a little bit bumpy. So now they're trying to reintroduce themselves to yarn store owners who may have um, distanced themselves from the brand a little bit during that transition. So it was basically just a sales event. Um, they told us, you know, about the brand, their style. Um, it showed us different yarns that they have available. Uh, Martin Story was there who was a knitwear designer, my sister totally fangirled um, and he talked about his design aesthetic and we got to see samples of some really gorgeous knitwear um, and I don't know it was interesting Rowan we have a little bit of Rowan yarn in the store we have their brushed fleece but we haven't really invested very heavily in Rowan yarn and so this was a good opportunity to just see some of their different yarns and find out to what degree we might be interested in carrying them in the store. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the yarns that we did get from them, you know, to like make samples with or just play around with because you don't get a lot. Um, so first, of course, as soon as I start recording, my nose starts running. Um, so this is their Kid Silk Haze, which I think is a pretty well-known yarn. This is 70% mohair and 30% silk. I don't know if you can see that. And this is a little crochet sample that I made with it. Now, I love this kind of yarn. I love, I love, love, love mohair. I think it is beautiful and diaphanous and really easy to wear and I love like what people are doing right now where they're putting kind of like these mohair panels into their work so you have like alternating solid and these transparent sections but I can't wear mohair it makes me itch so I was really happy to see this which is cashmere haze so I lost the ball band, but instead of being 70 mohair and um, 30 silk, this is a 40% alpaca, 30% cashmere, and also 30% silk. And it's going to give you something very similar. Let me see if I can show them to you together. It's going to give you a similar look and feel to the mohair, but I can actually wear this. So... Um, I'm thinking this is something we might like for the store, but we'll see. 
um, I got a sample of this stuff. This is cashmere tweed. Um, the examples they showed us of the cashmere tweed were used a lot for color work because as you see, it only comes in 25 gram balls. Um, this is merino and cashmere. I'm trying to find out the percentage. Okay, this, oh yeah. So it's 80% wool and 20% cashmere. And I'm thinking it's about a DK or a worsted. They're ball bands, you should know. This actually came up during the Rowan discussion um, that they don't have too many crochet patterns. And you'll see that, I mean, you kind of see that across the board with yarn companies. You don't see as many crochet patterns once you leave craft stores. You're not going to see as many crochet patterns. And the woman who was running the event, she said, well, you know, it's hard to find good crochet designers. It's not. So I, before I left, I made sure to give her a list of some crochet designers that I like. And she said, you know, that they would follow up with that. And hopefully she really does because their ball bands don't even give you, um, I don't know if you can see, crochet gauge. Cause usually you'll get... Um, you know, knitting gauge and stockinette stitch and crochet gauge and single crochet. They don't even bother with that. It's just like, no, this yarn is not for you, crocheters. Thanks. But um, their knitting gauge is, let's see, 22 stitches and 30 rows with a four millimeter hook. So it's a bulkier yarn. Um, I haven't done anything with this yet, so we'll see. Now, two of the yarns that I did sample a little bit. This one is not Cocoon. This one is called Alpaca Classic. And we got three skeins of this in our like gift bags that they gave us. And it came, of course, with a knitting um, pattern. So I found just a simple crochet pattern online. This was a terribly written pattern, so I'm not going to tell you the name because um, I can either tell you the name of the pattern or I can complain about it. And <laughs> I'm just going to complain about it. It was very, very poorly written. And I know not everyone can afford to um, do testing and um, tech editing, but if you can't do those things, it, you know, it kind of behooves you to really learn some more standardized notation instead of just kind of making it up and then at least having a friend work the pattern for you or maybe work the pattern yourself from your instructions to just because we all kind of like fudge things and gloss over things when we're working and kind of a lot of that was being done here it was a little annoying um so there were there's actually two more rows of the lace edging that i just didn't even bother with um because i was running out of yarn anyway but this takes about three skeins of the alpaca classic and i just wanted to to work with this is 57% alpaca and 43% cotton and it's like a DK weight and I just wanted to work with it a little bit I don't know if you can see how fuzzy this is so it's got some halo to it and like I said because I can't wear mohair I'm always looking for yarns that'll give me a little bit of that halo so um, I did like the look of the alpaca classic but you should know that because of that halo, frogging this stuff is a nightmare. And, um, you know, I just had to pull out, like at one point I missed a stitch and that was gonna like throw off my whole stitch count. So I did go back like a row and a half and I ended up popping the yarn as I was trying to frog. Um, and, you know, as you're working, you're gonna have to rip out a little bit. So I, I don't know if this yarn, it's really pretty and I like it and I like the feel of it, but I don't know if it would be worth the hassle just because of that one issue, just because it's incredibly difficult to frog. Um, and then you also got, well, on the tables they had like a, a centerpiece that had one ball of a lot of different types of yarn. And if you wanted more than one ball of a particular yarn, you had to like go around begging and trading. So I did do a little begging slash trading to get a couple of extra skeins of Cocoon. And this is just a simple K 
cowl that I'm not going to wear for very long because this has 20% mohair in it and it needs to be finished and fixed up and it's going to get some buttons along here or whatever but um this is a, a bulky weight yarn and I actually really really like it um would I carry it in the store yes even though I can't wear it maybe I can make something that's you know meant to be worn over other things and it's actually really warm um but so this took three skeins and it's about I don't know the dimensions were in centimeters so I think it's like a hundred centimeters by like maybe 40 um, and I really liked working with it but for the fact that as it like it touched my arm or touched my lap um, it did itch a little bit not like a lot not like it was oh my god get it off me but just enough that I don't think I'd want to wear it like the whole day which is a shame because it's actually a really nice yarn. Um, you can't really see see how it's kind of like barely spun. I like that. So it, it was a little bit of a thick thin yarn, and I think yarns like that give you great texture. As you can see, it's got this funky halo thing happening. I don't know if you can see all those strands sticking off. I like that too. Um. So this is something that I think we might be carrying in the fall going into winter, but um, I don't know how much I'll get to work with it. So that was the takeaway from the Rowan event. They do have some really nice yarns, but they're not really talking to crocheters. So we'll see. Now the next event I went to, well, we went to, Lisa and I went, and also our mom came to this one, was the Allentown Fiber Festival. It's a newer event. It, um, I think this was only their fourth year, and they used to be called the Steel City Fiber Festival, I believe. So you may have heard of it uh, under that name. It was in Pennsylvania, and lots and lots and lots of hand dyers, and bigger yarn companies have yarn reps that will travel to different stores and show the yarn store owners all the different lines and lay them out and show us color cards and really work to and you know sometimes they leave balls of yarn with us and really work to introduce you to different yarns and tell you some detail about them and show you samples but obviously hand dyers for the most part can't afford to do anything like that so if we want to buy um hand dyed yarns for our store Things like this are a great opportunity for us to see and touch the yarn, see the colors in person, buy some and get a chance to work with them ourselves to decide what we want to carry. And so that's what we were doing. And Lisa and I tried to make a point of not buying our yarns from the same people. So I got yarns from these companies. She got yarns from those companies. She got the oink pigments <laughs> before I could dag nab it, but that's okay. So this is what, what I'm about to show you is my Saturday haul and then I got another bag which was the Sunday haul. I may have overindulged just a little bit since I had, you know, like a good excuse to be buying yarn, but what's done is done. So here's um, the first company, I forget her name, but the owner of this company was like so super nice. Um, this is Cozy Color Works. And this is, these are, I think I ended up buying all fingering weight yarn. Don't ask me how that happened. One company I know I specifically was looking for the chunky weight hand dyed alpaca and they didn't bring any to the show. So yeah, I, I, it's all fingering people. Okay. So this is Vineyard and this is Daisy. And I don't know if you can see that Daisy has these little pops of green and yellow in it and I love that I love how subtle it is these are it's a hundred percent superwash merino and this is 550 yards and I love that because that is plenty to do a one skein project so if you want to buy hand dyed yarn it's a little bit pricey you can do something with just one skein although I did pick up two skeins because I saw this pattern 
I'm your booth, and this is the Keep Breathing Shawl by Rachie Newen. Rachie Newen is doing a lot of really cute shawl patterns. So I have her Bumps in the Road shawl pattern. I haven't gotten around to making it yet, but I have a feeling there'll be a lot of Rachie Newen shawls in my future. So that was Cozy Dye Works. Now this is a company that I had not heard of before, and it seems like a smaller company. And when I spoke to the, the woman in the booth, I asked her, oh, do you wholesale? And she said to me, no one's ever asked me that before. And I totally thought she was joking with me like, oh, ha ha, of course I wholesale. But no, she literally meant no one had ever asked her that before because she's such a small company. So that's really exciting for me because that might be an opportunity for me to offer my customers a yarn they haven't seen before. So this company is called Spencer Hill. And she uses all natural dyes. And I made my own little gradient-ish type of thing. So that's birthstone. That is lilac. So I'm still getting used to front-facing cameras. So I want to go left and I have to turn right. Anyway, this is, I believe that's going to be violaceous. So I'm guessing that's like violet and vodaceous. I don't know. But, um... And this is a 75% superwash BFL, a blue, play, blue faced Lester, and 25% nylon. And we don't have any BFL in the store, so hopefully this will be coming to our store pretty soon. And I am a unabashed purple person, so she had a lot of purple happening. And I was really excited. And this is 464 yards BFL has a really really nice feel to it this is from the fiberist and this is a it's called Ross DK and it's 50% um, Muga silk and 50% bison and I didn't even know bison yarn was a thing so I, I had to get some of this it was a little bit pricier but I really wanted to try it out. Although, um, so the guy in the booth told me that they kind of lucked into this fiber and they don't know if they're going to be able to make this like a regular thing for them. This might be just a one-off. So I don't know if we'll be able to like carry this, but if they do make this a regular line, I definitely want some of this for the store. Um, although I like, it's kind of like, I don't know maybe I don't even want to use it I just want to like hold on to it in case I'm not gonna be able to get any more of it but that's that's silly <laughs> so I might just make a simple like cowl or something out of it um I like these colors this the colorway is called rainbow lorikeet don't ask me what lorikeet is and then they their thing is that they use scientific names for everything and I'm trying to show this to you and I'm like doing a very poor job of it there it is rainbow lorikeet okay so this is 200 yards um two ounces and a lot of money for two ounces I think this was forty dollars um so the gentleman in the booth was telling me about it and he said that bison is kind of like um linen in that he says the more you beat it up the softer it gets and so I got a chance to feel a swatch that was in the booth and even though this is not I wouldn't call it a rough yarn like some of the like woolier wools out there but it, it doesn't have like that soft merino touch but that swatch he said he just washed it with a normal load with his jeans and whatever and it really did um, soften the yarn quite a bit so that's something to know about bison and then now Lisa and I both did buy from 100 Ravens because they had an awful thing happen. Their trailer with all their hand dyed yarn was stolen at a recent event they went to and they did get some of the yarn back. It was like a whole thing, but I went there intending to buy something from 100 Ravens. Um, so these color, this is their Yaksha base, which is 70 Merino, 20% Yak and 10% Nylon. I, I'm a fan of Yak. 
um, it's really smooth. I don't know if you can, how well you can see that it's kind of got like a little bit of texture to it. And these colors are called Loyalty and Marquis de Carabas. And it's 437 yards. And in cases where I only bought like one skein of each color, I tried to get two, you know, complementary colors that I could conceivably use together. And I think I accomplished that here. And what else is in here? Okay, so this is Haute's Knit, Haute, like Haute Couture. See, there's their little logo. And this colorway is called Firecracker. And I was really drawn to it when I saw it, you know, hanging in the booth. This was a company that I, I've been following on Instagram and I really like their, um, their colors. But, you know, at some point you do want to see colorways in person. So when I got to their booth, oh, colors are gorgeous. And I kept being drawn to this. Like I kept walking over to it and then walking away. I was like, no, and I'm walking over to it and I'm walking away. But the woman who owns the booth was knitting with this particular colorway as she was sitting there. And when I saw how it worked up, I was like, got to have it. So it worked up in something that was like similar to a stripe. So you should get like most of a row that was um, speckled and then the, the red would start coming in. So like the speckled part would just kind of keep bleeding in and out of these rows and it was beautiful. I don't know what it's going to look like when I crochet with it because a lot of yarns that give you any kind of patterning are designed for specifically for stockinette stitch. But I was curious enough that I had to pick some up. And this is a fingering weight, 463 yards, 75 super washed, and 25% nylon. And I think that is everything from Saturday. So now we're up to my Sunday yarns. And this is Machete Shop. And I, again, you know, I almost didn't buy this because I had just purchased this. And this colorway, by the way, is called Firecracker. I just purchased the Hope Knit. And I was like, do I need more red yarn? And then I was like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> so I went ahead and got this. Um, I love the, the colors that came out in the speckling. So over here, you got like the yellow and green. And then you've got like some black and a little bit more of that yellow happening. So I think this is going to look really nice um, with these these particular colors in the speckling when it's worked up. This color is called Red Dragon. It's um, 463 yards, 75% merino, 25% nylon. You're gonna see that a lot with hand dye. And at first I was only gonna buy two, right? So I taken two off the shelf and there were only four of this colorway left, right? So, because when I was in their booth, there were so many colors that I like, I got overwhelmed. So it took me a while to decide what I wanted. And then I was like, okay, I'll just get two, you know, I'll be good. And then I was like, I am lying. I want all four of these. But while I was dithering, a woman came into the booth and she took one of these off the shelf. So there were only three left. So I was like, either I'm going to get all four or I'm not going to get any. And she had this in her hand and then she started picking up other skeins and, you know, putting them together to like see how the colorways look together. And she had a friend with her who was like, oh yeah, that looks nice. And I was like, no, don't buy my yarn. And then she started, she had, she had three skeins in her hand and she put one skein back and I'm like, it wasn't this one and I'm still looking at her. And then she put the next skein back and it wasn't this one and I'm still looking at her. And then finally, cause she like couldn't figure out where she picked it up from. She finally put this one back and as soon as she turned her back, I snatched the other two off the shelf. I'm like, they're mine. So <laughs> I did end up getting all four of these, thankfully. So this is going to be a top of some kind. I'm thinking Maybe I'd like to do some sort of a cropped sweater. I'm all about the fingering weight sweaters. I know not everyone is sold on that um, trend yet, but yeah, I'm totally down. 
um what else have we here this is 29 bridges studios this is the company i told you about i saw online that they had a chunky alpaca hand dyed and i went for that and walked away with something else these were in like a sale bin so they, i think they were originally 24 dollars and these were on sale for 18. this um you know same sock base a lot of people are using so 75 25 merino nylon and 463 yards but when i saw these two colors together that was it i was sold and then i think oh, this is yeah this is also 29 bridges this is my mom's she ended up getting also from the sale bin two of this color this colorway is pumpkin uh this that I got is called One Pot Wonder and this is called Smack and for some reason I really like that. So that's 29 Bridges and then there's this company called White Birch and White Birch is doing some gorgeous self-striping yarns. Of course, you know, you're going to see the best effect um, when you're doing stockinette stitch but I'm hoping that when I single crochet these I'll still get some kind of um, striping pattern, we'll see. But this one, what you're actually gonna get from this, in the stockinette anyway, um, this colorway is called Pink Fire Burns What It Touches, I love that. Um, you're gonna get that charcoal gray and then the darker pink, charcoal gray, the lighter pink, the charcoal gray, and the white. So it's gonna alternate between the different shades of pink and always go back to that charcoal gray in between. Um, she had a lot of samples in her booth so that you could see how her stripes work up and they were stunning. I, I wanted them all. And I also got from her this color called Electric Rainbow. And what this is gonna do, you're gonna get like, a in stockinette, mind you, um, you're gonna get a neon rainbow section and then the light gray neon rainbow light gray um i have no idea how she's doing this i've only seen one other hand dyer doing anything like that um i think they're called must stash yarn um two words not mustache but must stash um but this woman is doing some absolutely gorgeous colors and then she has a cotton and this is merino and nylon. Yeah, so this is an 80-20 superwash merino and nylon. So this is a fingering weight cotton. I'm a big fan of cotton, especially this time of year. And this is a true gradient in that this is not, she specifically said this is not knotted. So she doesn't tie on one color to the next that the whole strand is actually dyed in the multiple colors and I love that I, I hate knotted gradients I know it's, it's like one way to do things but I don't know how easy it is to hide a knot when you're knitting but it's a little difficult when you're crocheting so this is 100% Pima cotton and 400 and 37 yards and looking forward to seeing how that works up and this is from Yakagini now we do have some Yakagini in the store but we don't have this particular base we have her heel toe sets which gives you enough yarn to make two socks and then a um, a mini skein for heels and toes and we also have the Highland Festival which is a yarn with um it's a finger weight yarn with neps in it but this does not have the nets neps this is um yak sock so this is 490 yards that's a nice amount um 100% superwash merino so no nylon in this and this color is called coal dust and I got three of these because I'm going to use this to make the Rainbow Smile Sweater by Dora Does. And I'm, so the Rainbow Smile Sweater has a rainbow chevron thing happening in the front. And so I'll be using this pack of mini skeins from 
Oh, they, their name is like Irish or something, so I'm not going to try to say it. There you go. Um, so the original Rainbow Smile sweater is a light gray with like really bright rainbows, rainbow um, stripes. But I saw this pastel version and I was like, oh, I definitely want that. So I knew I wanted to go darker with the body of the sweater. And the woman in the booth was nice enough to help me find this. And like we were just like totally on the same wavelength when I showed her the the pastel she was like oh I got something and she took me right to this and this was exactly what I wanted so I'm looking forward to seeing this as a sweater I'm feeling it's very sweaterish even though the weather is getting warmer like I definitely want to make some sweaters right now like in anticipation of the fall so that when fall comes the sweaters are already done and I can just wear them I don't have to like worry about making them in time to wear so this is from June Price, and we'll definitely be, if nothing else, we'll be getting this for the store. This is a speckled gradient cake. So it's like all the trends <laughs> happening in one, and I love it. And there was a sample in her booth of a shawl made with this. It was beautiful. This works up in a very surprising way because um, the color changes were just really smooth and I, I should have gotten more than one cake. It was a little pricey, but, um, and this is also 510 yards. That is definitely enough to make a thing. And I don't know if I mentioned that when I want to sample a yarn for the store, I much prefer to make a thing to just making a sample swatch. When you make a sample swatch, you're going to do your single crochets, you're going to do your double crochets, and that's about it. But when you're making a thing, you're going to do a greater variety of stitches. You might do some double crochet two together as you might um, work in the, the back loop of a stitch or something. You're probably going to be frogging more, so you're going to have to weave in ends. So you're going to do more things with the yarn um, when you're actually do, making a make as opposed to just making... A, um, a sample swatch so I did end up buying quite a bit of yarn but it really is important to really work with a yarn to see if it's something that I want to offer in my store and so this this is something that's like kind of not like me but this one it was so nice I just I couldn't leave it behind so this is Ellen Cooper's yarn sonnet and this is just like a funky chunky fiber mix look at that and this color is called clotted cream and my mom was looking at this in the booth and she hesitated and she was lost because <laughs> I snatched this up and she was like, oh, are you just going to buy my yarn? I was like, no, I'm going to buy my yarn. Um, we'd like to do a trunk show maybe um, with Ellen Cooper in the store. But until then, I'm going to be making something with this lovely and I want to just make something that's just a plain old single crochet stitch because um this yarn is doing so much and I just want to show all the things that the yarn is doing. So I don't really want to like mess with it too much or try to do any kind of pattern in it. I just want to create like a simple platform for this yarn to show itself. And this is um, 150 yards. Okay. It doesn't even say like what all these fibers are, it just says potluck, I don't know if you can see. Um, so let's try to show some of what's happening here. See, there's a lot of different things going on. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And I think that is the last yarn that I got. And then I did pick up a little something for myself. This is from The Wandering Vine. And the artist there is named Kathy Dinsmore 
and this is a gorgeous hand woven kind of shawl kind of wrap thing just throw it on for a second here and oh I already have like some outfits planned for this bad boy it's going to be hard to see it because I'm like in, there's like no way for me to stand up and show this to you but I don't know if you can see oh look at those stripes but this is hand woven and I went to her booth on Saturday and I tried it on and she and her friend who were in the booth were like oh my gosh that looks so beautiful on you and you should totally get it but it was like really pricey I mean when I say it's pricey it's $150 but I don't even think that's too much for this kind of work um, in fact I think she maybe underpriced herself a little bit but you know because I was there for work I couldn't really justify buying it but I thought about it the whole day and all night and I was like okay if I go back on Sunday and it's still there in the booth if no one's purchased it I'm gonna go ahead and get it and I went back Sunday and of course it was still there and she and her friend were like oh my gosh we were talking about it over dinner last night and we were like oh she looks so nice she should have totally gotten that jacket so you know I'm a people pleaser <laughs> So I had to get this jacket because everyone thought I should get it. I'm kidding. I'm not a people pleaser at all. But <laughs> it just so happened that they wanted me to buy it and I wanted to buy it. So everybody's happy now. But I'm so excited to own something hand woven. I've seen people weaving and I've seen the work they do. And it's absolutely stunning. And I feel so excited to own something like this so that was the last thing that I picked up just for myself and there is yarn everywhere right now um, but yeah so hopefully several of these will turn up in the store um, in the fall we're, we were really sourcing our fall winter yarns right now so because we just got in um, a bunch of summer yarns. The only thing we picked up, like, that's going to go into the store right now, we got some mini skeins from June Price because everybody needs mini skeins. Um, so those, so once we get those into inventory, you'll see those in our store. And I think that's it. And I'm trying not to make this go too long because y'all don't know me yet and you don't know if you want to spend this much time with me so I think we'll end here um, the last thing I just wanted to show you is the shawl that I'm wearing this is the pattern was from you know one of those leisure arts booklets and I think it was called wraps made easy and all the patterns are by Melissa Leapman. and this yarn look at that is um, black cat fibers and the colorway is Eye of Sauron and once you give a yarn a nerdy colorway name I'm I'm sold it's like you know lipsticks and nail polishes right once they have great names you just want to wear it it's kind of the same with yarn um, what I liked about this pattern is that you do you're actually making your lace edging there you go as you make the shawl so if you're wearing about running out of yarn like I was you can very easily adjust the length and you don't have to worry about trying to leave enough of yarn to um, add your edging so it was a really cool pattern it was completely simple and I really I think the the garment is just called shawlette and I want to make like 20 of these in fact some of these like single skeins that I got may end up being shawlettes um, so that's it for now. Thank you for visiting with me and I hope to see you all again soon. So stay stitching.